What's going on you guys? I am back with another fire alarm panel overview and demonstration video. Today's video is going to be on my Firelight MP12 fire alarm control panel. This is a very cool panel, very, very rare. I uh, love this panel. Uh, very small, if you look, compare my hand to that, and then you compare my hand to the 4008. Big difference. <laughs> uh, I actually, this is a lot smaller than I expected. I've seen them on YouTube and but when I got it, it was a lot smaller than I expected. Anyways, um, first of all, before I start, I want to give a big shout out to my friend David. He's the one who gave me this panel. We did a trade recently. I was at his house and he gave me this panel. Really appreciate it. Love it. And now I can do a video with it. And I've actually wanted one of these for a long time. So um, for some reason, oh, I love, I, I want it because it's rare and it's also very simple and very, I just like it. I don't know what else to say. Anyways, to get into it, as you can see, on the front door, it's a little bit beat up. We have a, a sticker that was torn off, and uh, but it's okay. I'm going to scrape that off and make it look better. It's already great. It works really well, and I'll find, I'll find a lock for there. Anyways, opening it up, this is what we see. First of all, the panel was made in 1995, the specific one. And also, you might be wondering, first off, why is there only one backup battery? Most times, you'd see two, just like in the 4008 here. You see two wired in series. Well, that's because this panel is not a 24 volt panel. This is a 12 volt panel. Now I'm not talking about the main AC power that plugs in. That's obviously house power. That's a 110 volt input. I'm talking about the output, which is the um, NAC wires and the zone wires. That's all 12 volts. So for example, this horn is a 12 volt horn. Well, this one's 12 or 24. So that's why there's only one battery. If this was an MP24, You'd have two, it's a 24 volt panel and you'd have two wired in series, just like I showed you in the 4008, um, to create 24 volts, 12 plus 12. But since it's a 12 volt panel and MP12, just one 12 volt battery. This is a 12 volt, seven, eight hour battery. Very simple, it just plugs in right there and connects, positive, negative. Very, very simple. So anyways, that's that. And it goes into like the little groove. But anyways, first off, you might be wondering, if you've seen this panel before, you know that there's supposed to be a cover that goes over this. I don't have that cover, but that's totally okay. Uh, most times, you know, the cover that would be over this would cover all the circuitry, and it would tell you what the LEDs and the buttons do. But I know what they do, and I'm about to tell you. So that's all good. Now, before I do, I'm going to show you this is what's on the door. I don't know if you can really see that. It's a little bit scorched up, but there's some information about it and all that. Anyways, now we're gonna get on to what the LEDs and buttons do. So first off, I will show you if I turn off the lights. The only LED that's on is the one on the right, which is the AC power. Now this, obviously the trouble light is off, so the system's all normal, there's no troubles or anything. So, so yeah, the only LED that's on is the AC power, which obviously we have power. So i uh, just telling you that it's powered on and all good. So. That's what that does, and the button below it, this is the silence button. So basically, or it actually, it's called disable. So if, it, if it, you activate the system um, and the horns are going off, that's what you hit. That's what you hit to silence it. Well, it, it actually disables it, but it's same thing as silencing, basically. Now, what's really cool about these buttons, in my opinion, this is very, like, standard, very, like, not complex, very simple, is actually, it's, you have to press it, you hit silence, and you actually, when you're done, you actually have to unsilence it, as you can see. So, for example, when you silence it, then you go to reset the panel, you have to unsilence it again. Same with the trouble button. Um, I, that's just really, I think it's really strange, but I love it. You know, like most panels like this, again, you hit silence, then you hit reset, and it unsilences it for you. So it's automatically ready to go back into alarm. But with this, you reset, then you have to turn it back on again. So I like that. It's very simple, but I just like that. So I've said that way too many times and I apologize. So the middle button here, all right, that's the trouble LED. So if there's a trouble in the system, for example, let's just say the battery gets disconnected. Let's quickly unplug it. See, I don't think you really see that, but the trouble LED is coming on beeping to tell you that there's a problem in the system. Unfortunately with this, it doesn't really tell you what it is, but you can figure it out, I guess. And then you would go ahead and hit trouble silence, which is the button right below it. As you can see, it's pushed in now. And then um, now it's, it still blinks. And now the trouble silence, let's go ahead and plug it also. Sorry. The, in case you're wondering, the PSO is taped. I do have electrical tape on it because it's kind of loud. Sorry, that's why it's really quiet. 
Anyways, to clear the trouble, let's just say, all right, the trouble is fixed. You fix the trouble. It's all fixed. As you can see, it, go ahead, it goes ahead and beeps again. That's because it's telling you now that the trouble's fixed, you can unsilence. So once again, if there's a trouble in the system, same with the alarms, you silence. And then when, when the trouble's cleared, you have to unsilence again, which is why it beeps again. Same thing with power. Here, I'll actually go ahead and unplug it. Go ahead and close it. And since the battery backup is plugged in, we can go ahead and unplug the panel. And now it's gonna run off battery backup. So you can see, it's not humming anymore. The AC power light is off. Trouble light is blinking. Go ahead and open it up. Silence the trouble. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug it back in. And it's gonna start beeping again because you have to unsilence it. It's not gonna clear by itself. Now it's back to normal. Now we're all good. See, that's pretty cool in my opinion. Anyways, lastly, on the left side, we have the reset. That's just the reset. So, you know, when it's an alarm, you silence, reset it, um, reset, and that's reset the panel, then you unsilence. So, and then the LEDs right there are zone one and zone two. This is a two zone panel. So in that case, if this was in a building, you would have like, two, if there was like two wings in the building, you would have zone one be one wing, zone two be the other wing. These days we have adjustable panels, adjustable systems where everything's in the same zone or zone. It's a loop basically. And you can tell exactly which device it was. Well, back when you had a two zone, when back when you had like a zone panel, it would just like tell you the section of the building. Like you would know zone one is section, whatever, what's whatever side and zone two is the other side. So in this case, I have a smoke detector right there connected to a zone and a pull station connected. I'll go over that in a second. Anyways, let's go over wiring real quick. So first of all, starting on the very left, I will zoom in very far. We have the two AC terminals. Now, very, very strange because most times the uh, power input is a very separate terminal block because just in case of, uh, they don't like connect somehow, it would fire the panel. But it's actually in the same terminal block, which is very strange, uh, but I do know that. I know the terminals aren't labeled, but I have a manual and I know what's what, so. Uh, be very, if you guys get this somehow, be very, very careful when wiring it because they they're not labeled. It's very easy to make a mistake, so. Anyways, so you can see the two here are the hot and neutral right there. And I have the grounding wire connected to a grounding rod that's grounded to the panel. I know it's not capped off, but it doesn't really matter in this case. I'm just, I'm just demo, I'm de demonstrating it, so. Anyways, um, that's the main AC power input right there. That's the power in, obviously, that gives the whole panel power. <laughs> I mean, you know. And then as you can see, just to make sure that the input and the outputs are separated, there's a terminal right in the middle. That actually doesn't even do anything. That's if you look in the manual, that terminal has no use. It's just to separate them off. So, anyways, now we go over here. Those two right there, I will point to them right there. Those are the NAC wires. So those two go to the notification circuit, which in this case I have a Wheelock MIZ horn connected, and this is a 12 volt panel, and this is a 12 volt horn. So that's good. And I have the re resistor. You can't really see the resistor connected in it. Therefore, as you can see, I don't have the resistors in here. So in that case, if the wire were to fall out, the panel would go into trouble telling me that there's an issue. So that's what I have. I only have one. You can obviously jump it and add a bunch of devices, but I just have one. So then we go here. These three terminals here are these zones. So that is zone one, that is zone two. And they both, both negatives share the same terminal in the middle right there. See that? So just like a security system, the negatives share the same terminal, but the positives are separate. So the two on the left are for zone one which I have the system sensor smoke detector connected. I don't remember the model. Let's take a look. This is a system sensor 2100S. Okay. Okay, that's good. And then on zone two, I have a wire going out to my Firelight BG10, which I thought would work well. The BG10s you would see very commonly. My, my town hall actually has this panel. Um, different style, but a little bit, a little older, but um. And they have BG10s, so it makes perfect sense. Um, Firelight and Firelight, same age too. So those are the devices that I have connected to the system. And that's pretty much it, I would say. So now we can close it on up and I'm gonna go right ahead and we're gonna do the test, all right? First, I'm going to grab just a little poking device here, just so I can poke the test button in the smoke detector here. 
So we're gonna go ahead and test it out. We're just gonna poke it and the alarm will go off. Here we go. Whoops. That was loud. So I hit disable, and now it's gonna start beeping trouble, so we'll silence the trouble as well. It gives a trouble whenever the alarms go off. And now we can go ahead and reset it. That will clear by itself, so we can go ahead and hit the reset button. As you can see, zone one is on reset, and then on silence those. And now it's ready to, to, to pull this. Here we go, let's go ahead and pull it. Now we can go ahead and reset the pull with the hex with the hex wrench. That's the thing I don't like about the BG10. <laughs> it's gonna be very hard to do. Come on. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna work. <laughs> Trying to screw it back in. Obviously, when it's on the wall, it's a lot easier to do. All good. Also, I forgot to show the back of it. There's the resistor. You gotta use the resistors on the last device, last device on the circuit. So if you had a bunch of pull stations on the same zone, you do wires in, wires out, wires out. Then on the last device, which is this, you have the resistor to supervise every device. So if the wire falls out, the panel will tell you. Anyways, reset and unsilence. And now we're back to normal. That's pretty much it for today's video, guys. That's the Firelight MP12. Uh, expect to see more videos with this soon. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Have a great day.